The Highland Park Scots are catching fire and rising up the District 10 4A standings. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Highlander Fieldhouse. I'm Brian Sucklett with my good friend, Coach David Clark. Tonight, David Peeler's Highland Park Scots will welcome the Forney Jackrabbits. It's a little early afternoon basketball as this one got pushed up a couple of hours because of all the weather we've had in the area today. But tonight, it should be a good one. District 10 4A, Scots and Forney Jackrabbits. It wasn't long ago the Scots fell to 0-2 in a somewhat surprising start to the district schedule. But since then, HP has caught fire, winning their last three in impressive fashion to rise to within a game of the District 10 4A lead. And Coach Clark, the Scots will finish out their first rotation through District 10 4A play this week. At home against Forney tonight, on the road against North Forney, a first-year 4A program on Friday. The Scots right now are playing like a team that has its second consecutive district championship squarely in its sights. Well, the Scots realize that they've got their, uh, they got control of their own destiny, which was great. Again, I think the season kind of, or district season anyway, kind of turned with that uh, victory on last Tuesday night, week from tonight, on uh, beating Newman Smith on their own floor. That was a big win for the Scots and kind of gave them the confidence that I think they needed to uh, show that they could come back from that 0-2 start and win uh, you know, still win the district championship. So uh, the task at hand is really tonight to take care of business. And, and Forney offers some things that are a little unusual. Uh, they've, they've struggled at times as far as record goes, but they will, they will present some problems to the Scots tonight. The Scots beat Terrell on Friday night, 59-36, to to move to 18-6 overall. They're now 3-2 in District 10 for a play. They'll take on the Forney Jackrabbits, who come into this one with a record of six wins and 14 losses. They are 1-4 in district play. They were blown out by Newman Smith last week, 84-59. to They're coached by one of the good young coaches here in the North Texas area, Bart Holloway. We'll talk a little bit more about him as we get into the broadcast. But a very important stretch of games this week for the Scots. They would love to hit that district turn at 5-2. and two, As they're just a game behind West Mesquite and Newman Smith, who are tied at 4-1 and one in district play. We'll run you through the District 10 4A outlook in between the first and second quarters. But we're glad you're with us here. Glad you joined us here at the Highlander Fieldhouse for the Scots and the Forney Jackrabbits. You know, Brian, we just got word that through the public, uh, the PA this afternoon about 2.15 that the game had been moved. So hopefully we'll have a, a good late arriving crowd here for our students. Uh, not a lot going on, so we hope uh, they cancel a lot of soccer games. And hopefully this will be the only game in town and the Scots uh, will have a good turnout and, and be able to defend their home court. Let's go now to the public address announcer for the national anthem and the introduction of the starting lineups.
Corning High School. Number three, Johnson. Number 10, Baker. Number 20, Chris Borowski. Number 21, Collins. And number 22, Chiefs. And now, for your Highland Park Scots. Number two, with seven former senior Chase Fletcher. The Highland Park Scots are coached by David Peeler in his seventh season at HP. He has 172 wins against only 48 defeats, a winning percentage of 78. His starters at guard, number three, Matt Fraschilla, a 5'10 senior, runs the point. The shooting guard is number 10, Matthew Kreitz, a 6'3 junior. The wings are number two, Chase Fletcher, a 6'7 senior. And number 20, Will Miller, a senior, 6'5. The post is the big 6'5 junior, number 52, Clayton Murtha. The Forney Jackrabbits are coached by Bart Holloway. The Jackrabbits are 6-14 this year, 1-4 in district play. Their starters at guard, number three, Lane Johnson, a 6-foot senior. Number 10, Sage Baker, a senior, 6'1". The forwards are number 22, Jamal Cheeks, a 5'11 senior. Number 20, Paul Prisborowski, a 6'2 senior. And number 21, Clay Collins, a 6'2 senior. The Scotties in their all-white home uniforms move from left to right. And this time, Forney's able to thwart the Scots on that little tip forward tip off play that's worked so well this year. Looks like they'd seen that before. We're ready for it. The Scots are going to face a lot of pressure. Uh, Forney, the Jackrabbits will press all over the court for all 32 minutes. So it should be an interesting test for them. They'll, they'll team up on the double team, the rebounder, and just put a lot of ball pressure. It'll be a tough challenge for the Scots offense as well as uh, you mentioned that the Pressure defense will be a, a lot for the Scots offense to handle, but they'll also get a challenge on the defensive end as well as Forney has not had problems scoring the ball this year. They're averaging nearly 62 points per game, but their problem, Coach, is they don't have a very hard time giving it up either as they yield 75.2 as Will Miller takes the first shot for the Scots. He missed it. The offensive rebound and put back for Clayton Murtha. Good That's going to be something to watch here, Coach, as this is a pretty undersized Jackrabbit squad. Very much so. And again, the, the, the uh, when you play a full court game, you're going to score some points and you're going to give up some points. So um, we'll see how this goes as, the, as it unwinds here. The team leader in steals, Matthew Kreitz, forced another one. He came into this one with 33, now make it 34. Oh. Scots with some good ball movement. Looked like they were going to get a nice look, but Kind of a little bit of that overpass that being un too unselfish sometimes that the Scots are guilty of. At all levels, I might add. There's Kreitz with a nice finish. You're not referring to your JV squad. Yes, yeah, sometimes uh, they, they do overpass a little bit. And uh, that's, that's a good thing. But sometimes you want them to go ahead and score the basket. <laughs> Floating it off the glass, a shot was missed by Prisborowski. Kreitz comes the other way. The Scots with an early 4 to nothing lead. Fletcher out to Murtha, who does a nice job to avoid a turnover. Matt Fraschilla, the area's leader in assists, gets it over to oh. Will Miller, who was fouled. It was Fraschilla to Fletcher to Will Mill, running the baseline. Tried to throw it down with two hands, but instead goes to the line. Well, we have seen a lot of back cuts lately, and uh, that overplay on the perimeter. And uh, we've seen Will cut back door on that and score, and, and he was trying to dunk it, and they wouldn't let him dunk it and fouled him. He's going to have to make two at the line now. First foul against Paul Prisborowski. First team foul as Will Miller scores his first point of the game. Nearly a 79% free throw shooter. He's just a great shooter, I think, Brian. is just one, one of those things that he's just, he's out here all the time. I know he, he's, uh, he's out here eighth period when the freshmen are practicing, and he's just out here shooting all the time. So 
he stays busy. He loves to play basketball. We talked through much of the early games of this season as the Scots had, str had struggled a bit from the free throw line, down under 60% for much of the early stages of the year, but now the Scots over 65% at the line. Which is a little more like it, something we've come to expect from teams coached by David Peeler. Right. We, we knew that was coming up even early in the season. We thought that's just a, 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 a something that's going to improve over the course of the year. They're too good a team to shoot in the 50s. Now they got a man loose on the baseline. Clayton Murtha gives the Scots an 8 to nothing lead. Good find by Matt Brichella, finding the open man out of the half-court trap. Averaging 8.6 assists per game is the senior captain, Matt Frischilla. Baker kicks it out to Collins, who also plays on the football team. Prisborowski missed the corner three ball. Collins saves it in, but to the wrong guy, it was Chase Fletcher. Kreitz saves it in bounds. Nice look over to Kreitz. 10-0, nice Scotties. Off to a great start. Scotts that worked all, all Monday and Tuesday on just being um, kind of strong with the ball, not panicking when you get a double team. And, boy, I've seen some come to the jump stops and, and just the kind of things that we worked on in practice. So that's great to see. We see a three-man crew today for the Alt Schuler and Company Scotts mop crew. We've got Judge Ellis over on the right side baseline, William White and Bo Lilly tag teaming things on the left. Alt Schuler and Company is a real estate advisory services firm that features big ideas and flawless execution. Alt Schuler and Company, proud sponsors of the Scots Mop Crew. So far so good for the Scotties, looking to move to four and two in district play. They've jumped out to an early 10 to nothing lead. Which is exactly what you wanted to see the Scots do. Take care, of, this is one of those take care of business games. I mean, uh, the records aren't necessarily deceiving in this case. Uh, uh, Forney has struggled and uh, the Scots are kind of on a roll, so you want to just keep it rolling and, and, uh, and try to blow their doors off as early as you can. The Scots averaging 60.4 points per game in league play while allowing 50.2. That's the third best offense in the league and the second best defense. The Scots, one of only two teams that are in the top four in both offense and defense. The other, the 40, North Forney Falcons, who the Scots will see for the first time ever on Friday. And I think they're playing better than a lot of people thought they would. They were a good program last year in their uh, 3A year um, coming in. And uh, I think they're going to be a, a, a tough out for the everybody in our district. A little high-low into Chase Fletcher. Just too much height down there. He's tied up and fouled. That's just a matchup that Jackrabbit is going to have trouble with in the half-court set. They, they really don't have the size to match up with Chase or with uh, Clayton Murtha down low. And when they're both in there, it's going to be, really be tough. First foul against Shakur Morrow, number five, a 5'9 sophomore. There's some young guys on this team for Coach Bart Holloway. In his fourth season here, in those four years, the Jackrabbits are 32 and 63. We've seen that a lot with our district opponents. They're, they're young teams. They're playing with a lot of sophomores and uh, hoping to build for the future. Coach Holloway was given some accolades in 2009. The Texas Association of Basketball Coaches named him the top assistant in the state of Texas in the 4A classification. So certainly a guy who big things will be expected from as Kreitz takes it all the way up. And Matthew Kreitz is possessed early on. He's got six points, and the Scots lead it 14 to nothing. You know, Matthew's had his moments where he has trouble finishing. He just did a great job this whole first quarter, first four minutes of finishing it down around the basket. HP totally dominant at both ends of the floor thus far. As Sage Baker tried to float it up, the shot was blocked and the shot was missed by Matt Watson, rebound Matt Fraschilla. We're about four minutes into the first quarter and Forney has yet to score. Oh. Fraschilla has whistled for the travel with 4.04 remaining. HP leads it 14 to nothing. Scott's got a little confused there trying to run the floor a little bit too quickly and, and uh, Matthew couldn't quite come up with the, the outlet pass and kind of got caught traveling. These squads were district foes from 2004 to 2008. The Scots won all eight meetings between these squads and only two of the games were decided by less than 30. As Boy, Juwan Tilly scores Forney's first basket. Nice set play off the inbound right there. They broke loose under the basket. Nice screen and Again, here's Matt in the front court with a two-on-one. Kick it over to Chase. Chase wants a dunk so bad. He thought he was going to have one that time, but he's fouled and is sent to the line once again. I think Chase is satisfied with the sure two or make them at the line. So 
Again, the Scots beat the backcourt pressure and had a two-on-one at the other end, which if, if you draw do it the way it's drawn up, that's the way it should happen if, the, if you handle the, the double team right. Chase Fletcher's improvement at the free throw line really emblematic of the Scots as a team. In district play, Chase is shooting 85% at the line. And then I jinxed him right on cue. <laughs> That's one on you right there. I have to lead the league in jinxes as <laughs> Jawan <laughs> Tilly has all five points for 40. It's a 10 point Scots lead, 15 to five. Saw a little of that backward trap. They really didn't have that uh, second trap ready to set up. Chase in the And one. Floor. Too much. Too much for Forney to handle thus far as the Scots will lead it 17 to five and Chase Fletcher will try to make it three the old fashioned way as Trey Garrison, number five, the 6'4 senior gets set to check in. Will Miller will get a break. Scots handling the pressure just the way they're coached to do. They were under control and looking for the open man, heading down the offensive end and trying to attack the pressure. Fletcher averaging 14.4 points, 6.5 rebounds, and 2.3 assists. We won't blame you for that one. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> 328 left first quarter. Scott's lead at 17 to 5. Brian Sutcliffe, Coach David Clark, glad you've joined us a little earlier than we thought here. As a little before 3 p.m., we were notified that this game was going to be played early, and Coach, you were relieved of JV coaching duty. Disappointed at that, believe me. We, we like to play. We work hard all week, so we play in these games, just like the varsity guys do. There's a steal as Chase Fletcher forced that turnover, a little behind the back stuff to Fletcher. Wave it off. A little extra step in there, but nice behind the back by Frischella, trying to find uh, Chase in the open floor again. Again, kind of the, the Forney uh, guard just kind of dribbled the ball off his foot, and we picked up a loose ball and headed to the offensive end. Matt Fraschilla showing those distribution skills that have him on his way to Harvard University. Coming into this game, Matt Fraschilla, 430 career varsity assists. So needing only 70 for 500 for his career. That's great. I don't. I could not tell you another player that's done that. Offensive foul. Wave it off. Chase Fletcher draws his 34th charge of the season. Trying to catch up to last year's pace where he finished with 57. He's got enough games to do it. I know Chase, he's going he's gonna to hang in there and keep trying to pull, draw, draw him, that's for sure. The fouls against Jamal Cheeks. That's six team fouls against Forney. The Scots have only one. And once again, no issues dealing with the Forney press as uh. Kreitz had to save it in. It was intercepted by Jamal Cheeks. Over into the corner. Tilly will crank it up again. Way too much on that. That's the easiest rebound Chase Fletcher will ever get. 233 left first quarter, 17 to 5 Scots. HP led it 14 to nothing. Scots hoping to win their fourth consecutive game. Kreitz. Well, I've talked all season about Kreitz's first step being just explosive, and that was a perfect example of it. He's got eight points. He's only twelve, uh, only four under his season high of 12. Scott's relentless at both ends. Can Kreitz get into double figures? Kind of Pulls well. it away from the Forney defender, Shakur Muro, but Kreitz turns it over as number 23, Campbell Brooks, a 5'11 sophomore, along with his sophomore compatriot number four, Mitchell Kaufman, the 6'3 second year guy, his first year on the varsity. Out there with Campbell Brooks, who was called up from the JV about midway through the season. All right, that first group with Chase and, of course, Matthew still out there, the, they did a good job of handling the pressure and, and give a nice lead and relax and no, really no stress, which is what you try to create if you're the Jackrabbits. You want to try to stress the offense as much as possible. Oh, good play. Trey Garrison knocked that one out from behind. Scott's with a three-on-three, three and Matt Fraschilla. Oh. Then has his pocket picked by Shakur Muro. Muro spins away. He'll battle with Clayton Murtha. Shakur Muro is 5'9". Clayton Murtha is 6'5". And you saw the result there, but Muro does a nice job at least drawing the foul. Yeah, that was a good, good foul by Clayton. I mean, uh, had a steal in the open court. He hustled back first off, which is great for the big man to run the floor and then uh, make sure they, there wasn't an and one opportunity there. Just the second team foul against the Scots, first against Murtha. 
and Shakur Morrow makes the first free throw of the game for Forney. Get a young kid, sophomore, building for the future. Quickly the other way, Priscilla. To Murtha. Murtha spins away from the pressure. He has six first quarter points, and the Scots lead it 21 to seven. That's that set play off a of made free throw the Scots execute so well, done so for the last few years. It was now the fourth consecutive game the Scots have scored at least 20 points in the first eight minutes. So getting off to better starts. Nice play by Trey Garrison again on the defensive end. Less than a minute to go. Priscilla will battle with Morrow. Back cut, Trey again. <laughs> that back cut play right, has been there. I, I don't know, it just seems like every time we run it, it's there, and it's not supposed to be that easy. So that's, that's great to see them for several ball games being able to execute that. It looks like an instructional video. It does, <laughs> and has for, it doesn't matter who the opponent is, it seems to be working. Campbell Brooks over to Murtha. Murtha to the trailing Kaufman who lost the handle. 20 seconds left, Scott's by 16, 23 to seven. That was a good pass to the right block. Colin Rucker had his shot blocked out of bounds and Forney will have the ball, but not until we have some substitutions as the senior captain number 32, Matt Wilson, the 6'4 senior enters the game along with Fellow senior, Ben Livingston, number 13. That's good transition defense by Trey Garrison, again, to just stop a three on two and knock the ball out of bounds, give the Scots a chance to play some half-court defense that they do so well. 16 and a half seconds left. There's Sage Baker. Collins wanted to give him a screen. Now we move over to the left side and back off. Five seconds. Baker over for Shakur Morrow. Got it. That worked out well for Forney. Not much else did, though, in the first eight minutes as the Scots jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead and will head to the second, leading by 13, 23 to 10. Let's walk you through the District 10 4A standings at this point as the Scots continue to creep closer and closer to the top rung. We're starting to see some of the separation we expected, Coach coming into the year, the TABC predicting Newman Smith to win the district, along with, with Highland Park in at second, West Mesquite in there at third, and then North, and North Forney in there at fourth, and you're starting to see some of those squads jumble up near the top. Yeah, I think it's, it is breaking out, and we talked about that from the very beginning, that uh, there, it, our district was probably a little top heavy, and I think the real battle will probably come down to when it's all said and done, between Potita and North Forney for that fourth spot. It I looks like it's five teams battling for four spots. I, I think that's what you could b just about say right now. Um, Highland Park, again, the, the beauty of that game last Tuesday was that they really do, if they win out, they're going to have tiebreaker edge and they're going to be able to be the district champion. Uh, with that being said, you know, it's hard to go 12-2 and two in this district or, or um, you know, for any team really to go 12-2. and two. So. It's going to be tough, and the Scots have it right there before them, though, and they got to play it one game at a time and, and uh, take care of business here tonight and take care of business at the end of this first rotation. And uh, then I, I know when they look back over the year, they, they over the district first half, they'll say, well, we can win every game we play. It was North Forney beating Creekview on Friday, 53-48. West Mesquite handed Poteet their second loss, 68-50. to As Shakur Morrow... Picks up right where he left off. He's now got seven points as the Scots lead is 11, 23 to 12. Braylon Rayson in that West Mesquite Poteet game had 28 points as that guy's just going absolutely bonkers. And then it was Newman Smith beating Forney 84 to 59. And Smith is 3 and 0 away from home in district play. And we, we commented too, they haven't played a lot of home games. So, you know, they, uh, they're used to playing on the road. And, the, and uh, the coach kind of let it, kind of planned on doing it that way. They wanted them to be kind of road tested and road tough, and that, that happens, and they're certainly doing a good job. Trey Garrison just picked up his second foul. It's the third team foul against the Scots. Morrow feeling it. Couldn't hit that time as Campbell Brooks is out with the senior captain, Matt Wilson. Number five, Trey Garrison. Brooks takes it up, can't hit it. Clay Collins clears the rebound. Number 13, Ben Livington, and number four, Mitchell Kaufman round out David Peeler's Highland Park Scots. In the corner, no sir, Jamal Cheeks. The senior missed it, last touched by the Scots. Scots have been kind of caught up a little bit in the pace that Forney wants to play in the last few 
possession, settling for mid-range jumpers instead of taking the ball to the hoop like they did for the most of the first quarter. So we'll see if they get back to doing what they need to do to be successful. In non-district play, Forney allowed 75.2 points per game. In district, they've allowed 75.2 points per game. So pretty consistent struggles on the defensive end. They're eighth and last in the district in points allowed at 75.2. That's 10 points a game more than the seventh place squad, which is Terrell. There, and again, a lot of that is dictated by the style that they play. You know, it's kind of like the Phoenix Suns of, uh, of old that they'd score a lot of points, but they'd give up a lot of points too. So it's the same thing with the with Forney. They're going to they're gonna make you play a fast pace and it's going to skew some stats a little bit. But, but right now it looks like they don't play much defense for sure. That was a really nice take by Trey Garrison, putting the ball on the floor, taking it up strong, and scoring his third and fourth points of the game. The Scots lead by 13, 25 to 12. Nearly out of steal as he battled with Sage Baker. Over in the corner, Jamal Cheeks with the ball. Back over to Lane Johnson. Now Shakur Morrow, who leads Forney with seven. He has seven of their 12 points. And Chase Fletcher just took his second charge of the game. There's going to be a lot of opportunities for a lot of guys. I thought Trey kind of had an opportunity there, too. And uh, had, Matt, uh, had uh, Chase right behind him to take it. So again, that's a, that's a big emotional turn when you have a guy that's willing to do that. The most charges in a game that Chase Fletcher has drawn this year was four. He did it against Irving in the first round of the Plano tournament. Try to go to the home run ball. It came off of both guys, but Trey Garrison was the last to touch it. Yeah, that's probably one that Ben would like to have back. He usually look, wait for some daylight to show, just like a quarterback does on a receiver, and uh, there really wasn't much daylight there. You're running out of court. Brian Sucliff here with Coach David Clark at the Highlander Fieldhouse. The Scotties will hit the road on Friday to take on North Forney. That'll be a 7 o'clock tip. We'll have it here for you. Chris Borowski open for three. Got it. Boy, nice extra pass there, too. Led to the open shot. Teams continue to shoot pretty well against the Scots from beyond the arc, hitting at a 49% clip in league play. In non-district, it was 26%. So we, we were I don't know, maybe if it's just you meet, they're meeting some mad bombers now or what, but that's, that's a pretty amazing flip there statistically. We were talking about that the other day, and even going back to the boutique game, they were 6 of 10 from three-point range, and the, uh, the next time we scouted them, they were like 2 of 14. So everybody throws their best game at the Scots. We've said it. It's not just uh, out there. It just seems like uh, everybody does play their best when you're playing the Scots. Matt Fraschilla got the rebound as the Scots with a 10-point lead. They're in control of this game, but a workable margin for Forney, who nearly forces another steal. Scots need to settle it down just a little bit. Fraschilla pounds it down low to Murtha, got trapped under the basket. There was a foul against Forney, against Prisborowski. It's his second. I think they were saying he was, it was before Murtha's shot, but we're in the one-on-one -on -one anyway. But uh, it was before the shot, so the referee wanted to make sure he, it wasn't a shot a shooting foul. Eighth team foul against Forney, so it's the one-on-one -on -one for Clayton Murtha, shooting 68% at the line this year. Scots have missed their last three at the line. And then Murtha gets it right back with a beautiful interception. Well, again, good defense again by the Jackrabbits to deny the fast break after the turnover. 4.48 left first half. Scots by 10, 25-15. Wow. Scots getting a little sloppy with the basketball. They really are, and they, they look so sharp for the first six minutes or so, and, and now they're not as crisp and, you know, playing again at the pace that Forney wants to play. It'd make you play in a hurry and play sloppy. Chris Borowski missed that one badly. Offside board, Matt Fraschilla had it knocked out from behind. There's Tilly. Lane Johnson can't get it, but there for the rebound and the putback was Dustin Wofford. Averages four points per game, and it's under 10, 25 to 17. And suddenly it's a game again. 
And coach, the last couple of games, we haven't seen the Scots relying on the three-point shot as much as we had the previous few. And right on cue, Will Miller had a toilet bowl out. Mm. Will had a streak of consecutive games with at least one made three-pointer end at 12 against Terrell. Nice deflection there on the defensive end by Frischella to set up the fast break. Miller to Murtha to finish. Murtha with eight. Scott's back up by 10. This is a big last three minutes here. Scott's need to get the momentum back. Long bank in. The Baker bank nearly attempt. banked that in. Yeah, sure did. 335 remaining in the first half. Scott's lead at 27 to 17. They led 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Had a 13 point lead after one, 23 to 10. Edging that screen real hard. That should be a touch and go. Yep. Murtha couldn't quite finish. Miller will back things up, and, and he's got two Jackrabbits with him. They double team as many opportunities that they can. And again, trying to get you to turn the ball over, get deflections, play fast. But that's what they give up sometimes, too. Block. Count it, and one. That's a big call right there. Nice assist by Will Miller. Jackrabbit start hedging that screen real hard. That slip, like Chase just did, is going to be open. It's just a matter of that guard being able to see it and get the eye contact with the post player to send him to the hoop. Two fouls against Lane Johnson, ninth team foul. It'll just be one free throw here for Chase Fletcher. The Scots have gone icy cold at the line, but Clayton Murtha gets it back. He can't hit it. Gets his own rebound and puts it in. That's a good follow by Clayton. Way to stay after. What a bulldog. We have a timeout on the floor with 2.53 left in the first half. Highland Park leads Forney 31 to 17. Kind of back to that 14 point lead that they jumped off to with 14 to nothing. And, and uh, the Jackrabbits have, have played them even since then. But uh, again, Scots need to keep things under control and not be too crazy that we're turning the ball over too much. So coach against Terrell, the Scots attempted only five three-pointers, which was their second fewest of the year. We haven't seen them cranking many from beyond the arc in this one. Is that intentional? Are they taking what's being given to them? I think you're taking what's given to you when you, again, it's a full court game with the full court pressure and, and a lot of times it's, and they're coached to do and they talked about it the last couple of days is attack the rim, attack the rim, attack the rim. You're attacking the press, so you're going to get a lot more layups than you would in a half court set where you might get more threes. Bump it into Cheeks. He tries to score over Murtha. Great defensive positioning there by Murtha uh, to commit a foul, making it as difficult as possible as Priscilla. That pass was a little bit low. Matthew Kreitz wasn't able to scoop it out. Jawan Tilly back into the paint. Clay Collins traveled. You can see a lot of little things that the, the Jackrabbits, that I don't know, I haven't been counting how many traveling calls they've had and little skill things that uh, when you play fast like they do, Sometimes you forget to put the ball on the floor before you move your feet, but little skill things that they're going to improve on, I'm sure, as, as their sophomores grow up and some of these younger kids get a little more acclimated to this style of play. Forney trying to keep this game close is something they've not been able to do their last three. They've lost three straight, and in those games, lost by 30, 30, and 25. But here's another steal. Jawan Tilly will have the easy bucket. Michelle just couldn't handle the double team that time. Needs to give the ball up, find the open man. 12-point lead for the Scots, pulling up from that elbow. Miller missed the shot, tried to get his own rebound, but Sage Baker pulls away for Forney. Baker to the trailing Colin Rucker. Rucker was fouled. Bit of a surge here for Forney. The Scots had their deficit down under 10, had a nice push to get it back out to 14, but Forney's answering back. It's one of those teams like we saw with Terrell, really. They just couldn't shake them. They, they get off to a double-digit lead, and... Instead of going from 15 to 25, it ends up going back to 10, and uh, Scott's got to keep the pressure on him to try to pull away. Fourth team foul against Highland Park. It's the first against the ledger of Will Miller, who has a seat. Trey Garrison back in. Got them both. Borney's four for four early on. That's a nice low post move by Chase. He couldn't finish and then commits a foul. 
And you got these Forney fans starting to get into it a little bit. They made the they made the drive up <laughs> for the five o'clock start. But yeah, I mean they're hanging around. Brian, they're hanging around. They're doing what they want to do. They want the Scots to play in a hurry, get a little sloppy, and it's working out in their favor right now. They've settled down themselves too. It's the act exact opposite of what the Scots like to do is Juwan Tilly might have had that shot partially blocked by Fraschilla. Clay Collins got the rebound. He rushed that shot. And then the Scots turn it over again. The Scots like to slow things down and really frustrate their opponents by a slow pace of play, but you're seeing the exact opposite here from Forney. Right, and you know, the Scots are all about execution and uh, doing more set plays than most of their opponents have. And uh, again, the idea is that they will uh, out-execute you. And uh, this open floor game is what Forney does, and they want you to do it. And they'll get you moving, and, and hopefully you'll throw the ball away. Or they'll get a deflection, get a steal. There you got double team, need someone in the middle. There you go. Priscilla loves to invite that double team. He knows he's going to have someone open. And the Scots carved him up on that trip down they the floor. Did. That's what you need to do. That getting the ball to the middle of the court is, is the way you beat that double team, especially if they're trapping it down the the uh, reversal guy like they did that time. 55 seconds left, first half. Scots lead by 12, 33-21. Oh, nice play by Matt. Priscilla ahead to Kreitz. Kreitz with a one on three, take oh. it up with a right hand. He missed it, late Got foul down. call. Yeah. Jamal Cheeks is incredulous. That was a late whistle, but it sends Matthew Kreitz to the line. It's the 10th team foul. Kreitz would be shooting two nonetheless. It was a shooting foul. You know, Brian, I go all the way back with Highland Park here that uh, in the Kenny Hoffbauer days. And and uh, Kenny, of course, is one of the gurus of the full court trap, the, the old UCLA 1-2-1-1. And, uh, boy, we taught that a lot at the middle school, and it's what we ran. He insisted that we run it every every moment we could. So it's a great attack. It really is. The Scots have, have kind of uh, gotten away from it. Oh, there's Prochella with another steal. Three on two. There's that 14-point lead again. Make it 16. That's nice. This little spurt is going to give the Scots a little momentum. Matthew Kreitz has tied his season high with 12 points. They've all been in the paint, I think. He has not had anything to worry about. That's all right. They will not be shooting. That was a foul the Scots had to give. Scott shooting two the rest of the half as Forney's whistled for 10-plus fouls. Just a sixth foul against Highland Park. Trey Garrison will. Catch a breather. Jake Steganga, number 11, the 5'10 junior, in for the first time. Jake was sick last Friday. I was wondering uh, where he was, if something had come up or whatever, but he was sick and, and uh, a little touch of the flu or something and missed the game last Everybody's Friday. Everybody's got something. Man, I'll tell you, it's going, going around, around here, that's for sure. Let's Baker see. looks over to Coach Holloway for instructions as there's seven seconds left. They hit a Baker. nice three at the end of the quarter. Let's see if Scott can defend a little better. Rucker. A forced two, a long one. Steganga got the rebound, and the Highland Park Scots will head to the halftime locker room, leading the 40 Jackrabbits 37 to 21. At Texas Capital Bank, we're driven by an unwavering mission to serve Texas businesses and the entrepreneurs and families who run them. Since our beginning in 1998, we've grown into one of the state's largest independent banks with offices in Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, Houston, and San Antonio. Texas Capital Bank is proud to support the Highland Park Scots and wishes the team great success this season. It's halftime at the Highlander Fieldhouse. Highland Park leads 40, 37 to 21. We'll have the third quarter in a flash. This presentation is brought to you by HPTV. If you or someone you know would like to sponsor this unique TV station, please email Mrs. Kelly Snowden at snowdeck with a K at hpasd.org. And from all of us here at HPTV, we thank you for watching. 37-21, the halftime score. Just about a minute to go before we get things going here in the third quarter of play. The Scots leading the Forney Jackrabbits here at the Highlander Fieldhouse. I'm Brian Sutcliffe here with Coach David Clark. And, Coach, you got to credit Forney. It looked like the Scots were going to win this one about 100-20 to 20 the first two or three <laughs> minutes into the game. But Forney has been able, to some extent, to impose their style of game on the Scots. And the second quarter was a bit muddier for HP. Yeah, they, they forced the Scots into some sloppy play and some turnovers and kept them in the ball game. Um, and then the Scots had that little spurt. at the. They got it down to 10, and the Scots had a little spurt there to end the half. And uh, I think that was really important. Uh, if you go into half and you've kind of squandered about a 14, 16-point lead to 8 or 10 points, that could have turned the thing around. But now the Scots 
uh, back in control. They go out and get another little spurt going with their starters out there and uh, hopefully put this thing away and we can go on down the road. The Scots led by one of the best scoring games of the year for Matthew Kreitz. The junior has tied his season high with 12 all in the first half. Chase Fletcher had seven, Trey Garrison with six, Will Miller with two, and Clayton Murtha into double figures. He had 10. And the Scott size has just been way too much for Forney at both ends of the floor, but particularly on the offensive side. As HP hasn't had too much consistent trouble with the press, Clay Collins did a nice job not buying that fake handoff that the Scots like to run out of the second half start. Did a good job, but it, it cost them a foul, so that was good. Chase, you can give a little plus for Chase on that. Let's see, if, oh, there's a one-on-one -on -one down. There you go. That was the first foul on Sage Baker, and Chase Fletcher now has nine points. That's also a little set play out of the baseline, trying to get one-on-one -on -one with no backside help for your, your big down on the block. Chris Borowski has a pretty nice stroke. He's got five points. He's made a couple of field goals in this one. Chase Fletcher in district averaging 18 points and only eight rebounds per game. That's pretty good numbers right there if you can handle that for the course of a district season. And uh, he's going to be, be doing just fine. Well, here was his line against Terrell. 19 points, seven rebounds, and five assists. Doing a little bit of everything as Clayton Murtha once again getting whatever he wants down on the offensive side. He earns another trip to the free throw line. Again, another set play off the sideline inbound. Um, rejects the screen and Clayton goes straight to the to the uh, basket. Scott's have a tremendous conversion rate this year uh, on set plays. I, I don't know what it is exactly, and I don't think anybody keeps that stat. It's just really good. It's Trust really us on that. Good. It's really good. I mean, I'm telling you, it's really good. So when they get in a half court game, they're really going to be tough because they either get fouled or they get a really good look. It doesn't always go in, but they get a really good look at the basket. Murtha missed the first. It was a two-shot foul. It was the second foul of the first 37 seconds against Forney. Oh, nice defense by He Murtha. gets two blocks. You know, one thing against this Forney pressure that Coach Peeler talked a lot about is you kind of catch and hit a jump stop because if you catch and take off, there's, there's going to be a little jackrabbit there right in front of you to draw a charge or force you into a turnover. Nice offside board and put back by Chase Fletcher. Chase now with 11. Clayton Murth is the team leader in blocks. He came into this one with 13 rejections on the season. He had two on the last possession. Scott's are really hitting the offensive board hard this game. It's good to see that. 15 now for the junior Clayton Murtha who continues to really work his game into form. He was a nice contributor on last season's 28-3 team as a sophomore, but he's gotten even better in this his junior year. He really has. He's uh, been just dominating on the board. That ball was deflected. Baker just throws it up wildly. He saw two behemoths standing between him and the basket and said, you know what, I'm going to bail out here and see what I can get. Earned a trip to the line. A little unfortunate will on the on the rebound. That's one of the things that the Jackrabbits will do is they will double team the inbound, the rebounder, defensive rebounder, try to prevent you from having a fast break with a good outlet pass. And the ball just got a little deflected from Will. That's the first free throw miss of the day for Forney. They hit their first four. Sage Baker averaging 10 points per game, but he's yet to score in this one. Scots need to continue this little spurt here to get a uh, little distance between the Scots and the, and the Jackrabbits here. Oh. Nice pass by Purcella. Great oh. patience for Murtha, but he left it a little short. I think Clayton Murtha's going to shoot a bunch of free throws before this one's over. I think he is. They, again, the size advantage of the Scots is, is uh, a little overwhelming, I'm sure, for the Jackrabbits. Scots are hitting the glass real hard, too, and pushing the ball up the court. Scott's now leading by 18 with 6-12 left in the third. Ah, short again. Murtha left the first a little bit short. You know, all post players need to be good free throw shooters because your, your goal is to either to score or get fouled. And if you get fouled, you need to be able to go to the line. The, the days of hack-a-shack are, are not good for high school basketball post players. It is amazing how much you see that, Coach, at the higher levels where you have Guys that you would consider your best player who you have to take off the floor in crunch time because you can't rely on him to 
hit what should be gimme points. It, it, that's very true, and that's just a part of the game that just seems to be disappearing a little bit. Collins nice. for three, yes. His nice. first points, he averaged eight points per game coming in. 16-point game, Scotty's 43 to 27. That's a nice look nice. from Murtha nice. to Fletcher. Fletcher now has 13 points. Clayton Murtha coming into this game third on the team in assists at 1.6 per game. That's great. You know, our, our po the Scots post players are great passers, both Chase and Clayton Murtha can really handle the ball well. Great hands. We've talked about it's so nice to have post players with great hands and catch a, a tough pass and, and be able to grab a rebound and finish. And both Clayton and Chase have really, really good hands uh, for post players. Chase Fletcher just picked up his second personal. That's the second team foul against the Scots here in the second half. That sends Lane Johnson to the line looking for his first point. This is a Forney squad that has four guys who have scored at least 16 points in a game this year, so they are not short on weapons. Yeah, and that has just as much to do with the style of play, too, that you never know who's going to get the steal, who's going to get the finish um, by playing this full-court trapping system. Scott's in a nice little press break right here. Running for Shella to the middle and reverse to Kreitz. Fletcher did a nice job to get rid of that ball before he could be double teamed over on the sideline, but Forney able to come away with the basketball just the same. In the corner, Shakur Morrow missed it. Wilmill had the rebound, like it was might have been fouled from behind. Boy, it sure looked like he got hit pretty bad that time. That was a miss. Finally, HP able to come away with it. Less than five minutes left in the third, 45-29. Matthew Kreitz looking for a new season high in points. He won't get it on that shot. A little bit of butterfingers there by Miller. Kind of nonchalant at that rebounding when he chased down the ball and just couldn't quite come up with it. Miller will take a seat. Campbell Brooks, the sophomore, back in for the Scots. I can expect we'll see a lot of rotating guys in and out here in the second half. I think this kind of game Campbell could really help the Scots because he's athletic. He can run. Fast player. You know, he's a football player, so he's a wide receiver. He can, he can move real well, and he's physical. That's be a good game for him, I think, to really contribute for the Scots. Sage Baker did nice to spin through the bowling pins down there and get a shot up onto the glass. He didn't make it, but he earned a trip to the line. That's second foul against Clayton Murth, a third team foul. Sometimes you get away with that spin move, and sometimes some referees just naturally call it traveling. Um, just doesn't seem to be a, it very much consistency to it. Free throw off the mark. Scott's quickly into the front court. There's that baseline jumper for Chase. That's money. Chase was a great mid-range guy. You know, his three ball hadn't been working very much for him this year, but his mid-range game is still as solid as ever. Scott's by 18. Collins off the back iron. Rebound. Campbell Brooks, he'll push the issue. He's got a guy on each side. He goes to the left way oh, and nice. one. Clayton Murtha will go to the line off the pretty dish by Campbell Brooks. You know, that was started by a nice block out on the perimeter on long range three in the Scott's really blocked out well. The rebound came, I don't. I think it hit the floor even, and Campbell picks it up, and immediately the Scots were off to a three-on-one fast break. Second foul against Jamal Cheeks, fourth team foul. This is the first time we've been up 20, right? I believe so. I think so. So they stretched out a little bit. Or Clayton can't buy one at the line today. He's having trouble. Rattle that one out. Scott's, Scott's are nine trap. for 16 at the line. Scott's doing a little trapping on their own now. Matthew Kreitz with a near steal. Tilly, way too much mustard on that pass. Was looking for Colin Rucker down low. That's That'll that. bring Matt Wilson into the game for the Scotties, replacing Clayton Murtha. That's throwing a little of that unexpected pressure. You, it's just kind of token double team, but again, it forced the Jackrabbits into a turnover. 
Um, Scots don't do a lot of trapping, but they, they did at that time kind of help the cause a little bit. Scots into the front court without the ball hitting the floor. The sophomore, Kaufman, finds Matthew Kreitz, and Kreitz will have a chance to set a new season high in points at the free throw line. Scored 12 in the first 16 minutes of play in the first half. Hasn't scored yet. He'll try to do something about that after the fifth team foul against Forney. And that play was successful because the ball, uh, Frischella got the ball to Wilson in the middle, and he attacked the, the, uh, the basket, and the got Scott's get a free throw out of it. Matthew Kreitz with a new season high, 13. He'd been flirting with a season high. He had nine against Creekview and then eight against Terrell. But he's over the mountaintop here with plenty of game left. Clayton Murtha is getting close to his season best of 17. He's got 14 points in the game. And Scott show a little 1-3-1 one, one trap again. Put a little pressure of their own out there. Scott's have shot 18 free throws in this game. It's long been a goal of Coach David Peeler to make more free throws than their opponents attempt. And they are now over that threshold for the season. Coming into this one, they've made 246 while their opponents have attempted 237. That's good half-court defense as much as anything when you force teams to, uh, to take a shot and block out and rebound and not foul them. That's great. That's a nice stat, good target for a lot of folks to work for. That's a good play by Dustin Wofford to find the hole in the back. The Scots rotating around to double-team the ball up top. Yeah, if there's a weakness of the 1-3-1, one, one, it's on the backside block, and they found open man. 3.16 left in the third. Scott's by 20, 51-31. Kaufman over to the senior captain, having to use the offhand to throw that up off the glass. Shakur Morrow, Jawan Tilly, a quick trigger jump shot missed. Mitchell Kaufman up ahead to Matthew Kreitz, who continues his best game as a varsity player. He has 16. And Coach Bart Holloway wants a timeout with 2.56 left in the third. The Scots lead Forney 53-31. to One week from this coming Friday, it will be HP Basketball's annual Hoops and Hot Sauce Dinner and Auction. Friday, February 1st. For more information on tickets, underwriting, and auction donations, email hoopsandhotsauce at gmail.com. I got it. That's my Aggie math there. It's two weeks from this two Friday. Two weeks. I was going to say, boy, I better be Come ready. Come on, you're a longhorn. You're supposed <laughs> to give me stuff for that. <laughs> That's we need okay. to get more of that you, going you in this broadcast. Think about it. We need <laughs> to have more collegiate <laughs> angst up here. <laughs> you definitely made me think about it. I thought, oh, is it coming up that quick? We already threw with January. I was worried about our grades. <laughs> 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 I thought I was supposed to turn them in or something. Um. <clears throat> 256 left. The Scots jumped out to an early 14 to nothing lead. 40 did well to stay within striking distance through much of the first half, but the Scots have been able to open it up here in the third quarter. They now lead it 53-31. to 31. Nice spurt here by the Scots to start the quarter and start the second half. And that was a nice find by um, Mitchell Kaufman to find a Kreitz running the floor down. Uh, nobody was in the uh, front court when uh, the back, Scots back court when, uh, when Mitchell threw the ball, and it was just an uncontested layup. It's been a three-headed offensive monster for the Scotties. Chase Fletcher with 15, Matthew Kreitz with a season-high 16, and Clayton Murtha with 14. Trey Garrison also has six, Will Miller with two. So Scots haven't had many guys score in this game, but the guys who have have really made an impact. Well, that's a tough call on Kreitz. It, they're going to call him for going over the back, but it looked like he went straight up to get that ball. Uh, he's just a little bit taller and can jump a little higher than than uh, Morrow could, I think. Morrow looking for somebody. They'll find Rucker over in the corner. Fires to the trailing Cheeks. Cheeks very short on that shot. It goes to HP. Kaufman over to Wilson. Wilson gets it back to him. Kaufman missed the shot, fought for the rebound, but Shakur Morrow clears it away. But Kaufman picks him up immediately, forces a bad pass. Mitchell had a bad angle on that um, offensive putback even and just didn't quite use the glass like he probably should have and take a power dribble and finish strong, maybe get an and one out of it. But he made up for it by great backcourt defense and forced a turnover. Frischilla, Wilson, Kreitz, Kaufman, and Brooks on the floor for the Scots with under 2.15 left in the third, leading 53-31. 
No look to the elbow for Kaufman. Give it right back to Matt Priscilla. Oh, nice. Beautifully paced. Oh, that's good. Beautifully that's paced, beautifully placed. And Mitchell Kaufman goes to the line. That's probably what he should have done the, the possession before and hit the sh st uh, jump stop and ball faked and finished a lot stronger than throwing up uh, a ball without using the backboard like that. Mitchell, good free throw shooter. I'm going to jinx him this time. I'm going to say he's going to knock them both. There's down. four fouls against Matt Watson. That's the sixth team foul against Forney. So the Scots will shoot the penalty the rest of the half. <coughs> Wrong. Well, we're one to one here. Okay. I'll tell Mitch he let me down. Garrison in, Kreitz out. Bad. Matthew Kreitz leaves with a season high 16 points. Missed them both. It's not like Mitch. <coughs> Draw a charge. Nope. Hasn't been much that hasn't gone the way of the Scots in this one, but free throw shooting has been stronger of late as HP's 11 for 20 at the line in this game. Mm. Kind of back to what we were looking at the first half of the season lots of times. Kind of around that 50% mark where the Scots need to be much higher and have been the last couple of weeks. First foul against Matt Wilson, fifth team foul. Baseline inbound, Shakur Morrow will get the ball from the official. Defense on the baseline applied by Trey Garrison. Good contest there by Mitch. Here comes Priscilla. More behind the back stuff, find Garrison on the wing. Oh, nice what pass. a touch pass. Nice pass. Garrison to Kaufman to the senior captain, Matt Wilson, for the bucket. That was a great play. That just looked pretty. I'm watching Mitch do a quick touch pass and finding Matt Wilson underneath the back. He didn't even have to cock that arm. It looked like he started pushing it forward before the ball even got to him. Rucker out to Jawan Tilly. Was closed out immediately by the senior captain, Matt Fraschilla. Turnover by Forney. Against Jamal Cheeks. His third. Number 44, Derek Kahn checks in for the first time in the game. The 6'5 junior, Jake Stegenga in the game as well. Number 11. you got a sophomore, two juniors, and a couple of seniors out there right now. Good pass. Fletcher. Nice. Derek Kahn, fresh into the game, fresh into the scorer's book with his first pair. Scott's lead at 57-31. Fletcher with another rebound. Here's Garrison with 42 seconds left. HP by 26. Quite enough on that pass intended for Kahn. Here comes Colin Rucker. Rucker battles with Chase Fletcher. It's a block. Ah, didn't get that one. Chase thought he'd drawn his third charge of the game. Didn't quite get there. It looked like it looked like a good call. I think Chase was a little bit and a little bit leaning back too. I think he was uh, anticipating more contact than he actually got. Again, that's been a good quarter for the Scots. Pull away a little bit. Um, kind of ex exert their uh, dominance. They're the better team, and I think it, they're, uh, they've are they showed a little bit here. It's not always been pretty, but the Scots, again, have attacked the basket, high percentage shots, and, and uh, knocking down. You had, you know, normal free throw shooting, and this is a 30-point game right now. So, Six-team foul against the Scots. Colin Rucker will try to make it a 50% trip. The Southpaw does it. 20 seconds to go. Scott's lead it by 25, 57 to 32. That's 10 of, seconds. Scott's just being deliberate with the ball, which is good. They're going to get a good shot here. Running out of time now. Garrison get over something. to Jake. Come on, Jake. Three seconds. Here's Chase. One dribble. Rises. Can't bank it in. Scott's are eight minutes away from their fourth consecutive win. After three, they lead the Forney Jackrabbits 57 to 32. I'm Brian Suckleff here with Coach David Clark, and 
Coach, the Scots looking good to move to four and two in district play as we look ahead for a moment to Friday's matchup with North Forney. It'll finish out the first rotation through district. Bit of an enigma, that North Forney squad. They beat Poteet badly, which is the team that handed the Scots their first district loss. A game that I am sure David Peter's squad is looking forward to in a couple weeks to try to avenge that loss. But HP playing well here against Forney with a 25-point lead after three. It, they have, and, and, you know, again, we said this when we first looked at the district race that North Forney was kind of the great unknown uh, coming up from 3A last year, a new school out in Forney, and uh, they had been very successful at the 3A level. And, and you know, winning breeds winning a lot of times, and uh, they came in here with a, a playoff caliber basketball team that they really were very proud of, and, and they picked it right up here with the uh, – with the 4A at the 4A level, and again, I think they're going to be a, a good test for the Scots because you start comparing opponents, and, and they look very similar to the way the Scots have played. Uh, uh, they were uh, it's very interesting in the game against uh, West Mes was I think yeah West Mesquite. They were down a bunch, and then they had a outscored them by 26 or something in this, the fourth quarter to turn it into a ball game. So they're they're going to play hard. There's no doubt about that. Number 44, Derek Kahn with the rebound. He's out there with number 11, Jake Staganga. Number 5, Trey Garrison. Number 2, Chase Fletcher and 1. Nice nice outlet first off from, from Derek Kahn to get the ball to, to uh, Trey on the wing. And then Trey, like we've been seeing the whole three quarters, he's attacking the basket in two-on-one break and found the open man running the floor, big Chase Fletcher. Chase with 18. He's the leading scorer for the Scots. 60 to 32. Bit of a correction. It was North, it was North 40 beating Poteet by four, 52-48. Collins scores his fourth and fifth points. Now we lost by four to West Mesquite. That was a game they came from way back to. They were down 26 after the, three in that game. but that, Yeah, they really came from nowhere to win that game. Made it interesting, to say the least. Needless Staganga to Kahn to Garrison. That back cut again. Set play, the back cut is, has been there for the last couple of weeks. Uh, I, if I was scouting the Scots, I would uh, definitely be watching for the back cut. Collins turns and hits. He's got a couple of field goals in a row here in the fourth. Clay Collins and Shakur Morrow have seven points apiece. They're the leading scorers for Coach Bart Holloway's team. A squad still looking for its first 4A playoff spot. Coach Bart Holloway is a guy who knows about getting teams to the promised land after long droughts. He played, he was a standout guard his junior year at Maybank. And his dad was an assistant coach for that team. And they were able to take Maybank to the playoffs for the first time in 40 years. And the team that ended up knocking them out of the playoffs was the Forney Jackrabbits. That's good. I've, I've spent a lot of time in Maybank. I'm, my in-laws have a nice place at Cedar Creek Lake, and it seems like I spend more time than I ever thought I ever would <laughs> in Maybank, Gun Barrel I bet you didn't City think you'd hear about Maybank no, on this broadcast either. I, I didn't either. know that. That's great. Of course, you are the, the, the wise one and knows all of these little pearls. I love it. But uh, that's great. Forney has to lead the league in left-handed guys. <laughs> Seems like every guy that strides to the line is cranking it up to the left hand. 62-36 as the Scots give it back to Forney. 6-16 left in the fourth. Not, I guess they said he stepped out of bounds. I'm not sure. He didn't really point to the line or anything. I don't think that he didn't report a foul. I'm not sure what that was. The Scots jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead early on as Campbell Brooks comes away with it after the ball was deflected from behind. Give it over to Kahn. Kahn blocked from behind, last touch by Forney. Showed a little athleticism from Campbell right there. He's really gonna push the envelope and try to make things happen. As Coach Peeler puts in his Coach David Clark maximum torture lineup of Campbell Brooks and Evan Buchler on the floor at the same time. Uh, playing my boys, this is good, <laughs> I like it. I'm glad they're getting a chance. Couple guys I know you miss having. 
and then Brooks with a steal. He's had some nice minutes in this game. That showed a lot of speed right there. That's that athleticism I was talking about. Let's see if Evan can have a chance to hit a hit the three ball. Not sure we've had a three today, have we? Been attacking the basket so much. No, sir. There's Evan, the back cut. <coughs> the Scots only have one game this year where they have not hit a three, and there this one won't be another. Buechler hits his fifth triple of the year. He did that a bunch of times the last year and a half for me. I, I just love to see him shoot the ball. He's, he's just got a, a trajectory that is fun to watch. The net just flies up. It's just pretty. And it sure is pretty when it goes in, too. He's going to attack This the time he'll float it up with the right hand. Clayton Murtha, he's one off his season high. And again, good, good, good possession there. The Scots attacked the basket. Didn't, Evan couldn't quite finish, but Clayton right there attacking the rebound. Love it. Scott's now by 31, 67, 36. Oh, good play, Derek. Got a little deflection. 447 left in the fourth. Number 14, the sophomore Ryan Brady in, along with senior captain number 32, Matt Wilson, as Murtha and Campbell Brooks leave. That'll probably be it for Big Clayton. He leaves with 16 points. Good to see Ryan back. He's been nursing a sore back, and he came back to practice this, this week, and he... I'm, I'm hoping he's doing better. This cold weather, I don't know. My back hurts, <laughs> as I can imagine now. I have no excuse. Back, my back hurts. Oh, my gosh. I'm hoping he's doing all right. He's, he's a hard worker, a good kid. He played last year for me as a freshman. Derek Kahn took a step in, missed it. But there's Matt Wilson getting his nose in things. He's got four points in the game. And the Scots lead it 69 to 36. You know, it's always great to, I mean, be able to go to these practices and then watch the games. You you realize the points of emphasis that Coach Peeler talks about, and you see him come out on the on the actual game. And one of the things he was harping on since really since uh, Newman Smith game a week ago is attack the offensive basket. We we don't get enough offensive rebounds, and well, we are getting a ton of offensive rebounds. So it's been great to see. Buechler had his shot blocked from behind by Clay Collins. Collins also plays football for 40 and does a little bit of everything. He'll punt, plays receiver. You'd see him in as a wildcat quarterback every now and again. They had a good football team. Made the playoffs as a fourth place team, and um, they're, they were pretty good. They're, they're going to be tough, tough to handle next year. Again, just like their basketball, they got a lot of young guys. Here's Evan again. Up, oh, didn't get him the ball. Ryan Brady veers into the corner. Con thought about the three ball. He'll eat it, and the Scouts will run some more clock. Pretty take on the baseline. Ryan Brady, his shot was blocked. We'll see how his back's doing after that. Collins ahead to Jawan Tilly. First points for Tilly since the second quarter. He scored five in the first quarter. Has nine for the game. He's the leading scorer for Forney. Scouts lead by 31, 69 to 38. That's a tough call on, on Derek setting a screen. They call it an illegal screen, but... Well, that guy just uh, mowed, kind of mowed into him and had no choice but to move a little bit. Got a very the crowd favorite Stevie Smathers in the game now. The 6'1 senior as the Scots are getting close to their best offensive performance of the season. 73 against Wichita Falls is the high watermark this year. Clay Collins into double figures. He has 10 all in the second half. Be patient, be patient, throw it ahead. There you go. Coach David Peeler wants a timeout trying to avoid a 10 second call. Definitely, definitely. 308 left in the fourth. It's all HP, 69 to 41. Our next broadcast of Highland Park Scots varsity basketball will be this Friday night as the Scots take their first long roadie in district play, heading out to Forney to take on North Forney, the Falcons. That'll be a seven o'clock tip. So. The second half of district play, we'll head out to Terrell, we'll head out to Forney, get some of those miles going as I can see the eyes of the crew here lighting up with anticipation. <laughs> I'm sure. The, the good news of the second half, too, though, is uh, we get Newman Smith here and we get West Mesquite here, so that's going to be really good to see.
Three minutes to go. Pass to Stevie ah. Smathers. Smathers unselfishly was looking for Buchler over on the right block. That's Pass that, was knocked out of bounds. That's that overpassing again. I mean, Stevie could have finished that with a nice little left hand and chose to try to give it up. That's to a good problem to have, right, yeah. as a coach, when you're telling guys, shoot the ball. You're it, passing it, it too much. It is. That's true. You are too unselfish. Buchler's shown some assertiveness in this game since he's come off the bench. Hit that three, had some nice slashes to the bucket. He's an aggressive offensive player. He really is, and, and I've talked about him a lot, and, of course, I've had him for a year and a half, and he's, uh, he's a guy that can go on a streak that you just wouldn't even believe and, and hit five or six threes in a, in a four or five-minute span that just will blow your doors off. Tilly missed it. Nice. Rebound, Stevie Smathers. Nice board by Stevie. Ben Livingston in the game. 225 remaining. Scotty's by 28, 69 to 41. Jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead. Did the Scots? They led 23-10 after one. Had a 37-21 advantage at halftime. Once again, <laughs> finding win. which guy is going to shoot the open shot, and Ben right. Livingston buries the triple. Yeah, nice, nice pass. The extra pass from Ryan Brady to find Ben all alone. Sage Baker can't win that battle against Smathers. Last touched by Forney. Less than two minutes to go. The Scotties are one away from their season high. Drawing even at 73. They need 74 to set a new high mark. So the Scots will move to 19 and 6 on the season. They'll win their fourth consecutive game to move to 4 and 2 in league play. And we'll see what else happens in District 10 4A action tonight. I don't know if any of the other games were going to be played early tonight as Buchler pulls in the steal. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I know um, one of our middle school scouts are over here, and, and uh, he said that his game that he's going to is still at 7 o'clock. So. Uh, getting a little ragged here. Come on, Scott. That a boy, Steve. Mathers finish. takes it baseline. Tried to lay it up, and he'll go to the line. Go to the line. One oh three to go. As the crowd comes to a hush. Usually there's someone in the crowd with the the fat head uh, <laughs> picture of Stevie. He's he's again a senior kid has been just worked so hard and um, he gets some time when it's uh, a game like this, which is great for Stevie and he knocks down two free throws. One of the best free throw shooters on the team when you go through the practice statistics and all that. And it's Stevie Smathers bucket that gives the Scots a new season high this year with 74 points. That's great. Glad he was the one to do it. If it tells you anything about the struggles that Forney's had on defense, this is the Scots' best offensive performance of the year. It's still under Forney's defensive average. <laughs> and again, if you, if you made free throws, here, this is going to go over their average now. Livingston with five points here in the fourth with 35 seconds to go. And this is a squad from Forney that's scoring 62 points per game. So the Scots holding... This Jackrabbit squad, 20 points under their average. It's that good Scott defense that we know and we expect to see every game. And it's going to play somebody in the 40s or, or at least uh, play them tough. And this has been no exception tonight. 12 seconds to go. The Scotties content to rag the rest of the clock off. And win number 19 this year will come. In a 76-41 win, HP has defeated the Forney Jackrabbits to move to 4-2 in league play this year.
Forney drops its four straight. They fall to six and 15. They are now one and five in league play. Chase Fletcher had 18 points for the Scots. Trey Garrison with eight. Matthew Kreitz with a new varsity career high, 16. Stevie Smathers with a pair here in the fourth quarter. Ben Livingston with a nice flash here in the fourth. He had all five of his points in the final frame. Evan Buchler with a triple here in the fourth. Will Miller, two points. So you got to like beating a team by 35 where your second best score has only two points. That is a good thing. I mean, uh, Will didn't have a very good game tonight, and, uh, and that's good, but the rest of the team picked him up, and, and it's good to see, and, and that's really one of the things we need is a little more balance in our scoring. You know, we've had games where Chase and Will have been in only two scores before, so it's nice to see Matthew Kreitz step up and, and do so well, and, of course, Clayton Murtha, I think every single game he gets better and better, so that's been fun to watch. Matt Wilson had four, Derek Kahn with two, and Clayton Murtha just one off his season high. He finished with 16 points. We've had a great crew bringing this one to you, adjusting on the fly as we only had a couple hours notice that this game was going to be played two hours earlier. The producer is Kelly Snowden, our fearless director, Drew Allman, Alex Kramer up on the high cam, Connor Palacios down on the floor, and Luke Lacey handling the replays in this one. So great job, team. We hope you'll join us for the next broadcast of Highland Park Scots Varsity Basketball this Friday night as the Scots travel to Forney to take on the North Forney Falcons. It will be a 7 p.m. tip. We'll have it here right for you. Coach David Clark, great job, my man. Go get them on the JV side there in North Forney, get you another win. You had a night off tonight, so really uh, we're, we're bring the pain on Friday. <laughs> we're going to be eager to play come Friday. We, we didn't. We weren't looking forward to having a night off, and it just happened. So uh, we'll be ready to go on Friday night. Great job here tonight. Coach David Clark will do it again on Friday. We hope you'll join us. Until Friday, I'm Brian Sutcliffe. So long, everybody. This presentation is brought to you by HPTV. If you or someone you know would like to sponsor this unique TV station, please email Mrs. Kelly Snowden at snowdeck with a K at hpasd.org. And from all of us here at HPTV, we thank you for watching.